you're really the first one to make the the jump. I mean, right? Were, weren't you the first to be part of the invasion? The first to technically jump in the ring? Yeah, I think I was technically the first contracted WCW wrestler to appear on WWE television. Yeah. Um, and that was just a coincidence. Well, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but I think it was just a case of, oh, hey, Raw's in Calgary. We want the first one to be a surprise. This is the easiest way to sneak somebody in that if they were going to fly someone to, you know, if they had to fly Booker T to Memphis to do a run in for a television, someone's going to see Booker T in the airport and it'll get out. But me being seen in Calgary <laughs> is, is pretty common. So it's not a big deal. Right. And because they didn't even tell me, they told me that we're flying all the WCW talent to uh, Connecticut to meet with Jim Ross and get, you know, the the tour and the initiation and just the introduction to the company and they said there's no point in wasting money to fly you to connecticut we're in calgary in two weeks just come down and you'll have your meeting with jim ross at the building okay so i went down thinking that was the truth and it was mid to late afternoon that someone came up to me he's like oh you're on the show tonight kid and i'm like yeah right ha 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 and ignored him and then later johnny came back to me he's like yeah, you got your gear right. Cause you're on tonight. I'm like, what? I'm like this. You're not ribbing me. He's like, no, he says you're on tonight. I'm like, oh, okay. So I had like two hours notice because they didn't want it getting out. And again, maybe they also thought it's like, it's his hometown. He'll definitely get a big reaction yeah. where again, obviously if they'd have done something in Houston television, a week or two, either side of that, they might've done it with book. But as it would happen, there was Calgary and it's like, well, this kid will definitely get a reaction in his hometown. So let's just do it. What did you think about the alliance, the invasion, that whole thing? Because it seemed like a bit of a flub just from a fan standpoint. Like, wow, we expected so much more. And then, you know, we got Steve Austin and Kurt Angle on the on the WCW team when they were so true blue WWF guys, especially Austin. I mean, I know he wasn't WCW, but I mean, man, he carried WWF to beat WCW. Why the hell would he be on Team WCW? Did you enjoy any part of that that invasion angle? I enjoyed some of it. I, th I think the one thing that really worked was the, the show where they did that dramatic turn in the ring with the ECW guys and the WCW guys. Yeah. Like that worked well, that was really cool. But yeah, at the end of the day, we lacked like even just two people, two more people I think could have done it. Like if we had flair and Eric or sting and Eric, I think we would have been fine. You know, I, I think, again, Stinger Flair as someone who everyone associates as WCW. Yep. And Eric, obviously, as Vince's foe from the Monday Night Wars. It's like yeah. not having Eric at the start and we've got, you know, Shane McMahon as our, our, our leader really, really hurt. And not having Stinger Flair. Like, I think if we had those two, obviously a few others would have helped as well. But I think those two... Two of those three, and Eric had to be one in my opinion, it really would have made a difference. And then the other thing that just always felt weird, and, and there was a few of us that kept asking, it's like, who are the baby faces here? Like, it just feels weird. Like, when you're putting stuff together, you generally, okay, they will cheer this, they will boo that. And it's like, we never sort of knew what reaction we were supposed to be trying to get because it's like, who are the baby faces? So that was odd and then one other thing which again i wish i would have managed to snag one but i've never actually saw them pj uh claims he saw them after my initial run in and then uh bill demott did his and then we there started being a few more i had pitched to the office it's like we're not as identifiable like we're just a whole bunch of people i said what about getting team tracksuits like new japan does Cause like, if you're a, you know, a young lion, if what you get the, the new Japan sweats, we know what team you're yep. on. Yep. And I said, what about getting actual WCW sweatsuits so that if it's a backstage segment, if it's a run in, if it's, you know, that face to face, it's like, you always know what team we're on. Cause we wear our uniforms. Now, if it's a match, we're going to be in our gear, obviously, but we'd have those. And they liked the idea. They told me they were going to do them. And Peach one day comes, he's like, oh my God, I was just at the seamstresses. You should see these track suits. They're awesome. They got our names on them and shit. They're great. And like the next week they changed the direction, and everything. And it's like, they kiboshed it because, yeah. you know, things were going a different direction. And I remember thinking to Peach, I'm like, 
what did they do with the suits? Can we still have yeah. them? It's like, I wouldn't mind one. <laughs> yeah, it would look awesome, yeah, even at home, yeah. Yeah, but I, I just thought it would have at least given us a definite identity that, because like you say, it's like, you know, Austin in particular, it's like he comes out and it's like, is anyone first thought when he comes through the curtain is WCW or the Alliance? It's like, I can't imagine where at least if there was sort of an identifying uniform, obviously he'd still want to put his stone cold t-shirt underneath it. Cause he's got, you know, millions of dollars of merch money to make, but I just w thought that would have helped to at least give us an identity. Yeah, really. And the Austin thing is just crazy. Cause he's the kind of the reason they or not put out of business, but he's kind of the reason why WWF, took over really i mean it's just odd odd uh booking there I just well yeah and and the fact that stone cold steve austin only exists because wcw didn't have any plans for him yeah exactly got a fedex so, in the mail yeah yeah so it really was like the most absurd pick but it it was what it was thank you for watching the hannibal tv Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.